College football is back, and we kick it off from Logan, Utah, with an in-state matchup. The high-flying T-Birds against the physically-minded Aggies. Southern Utah versus Utah State. The season starts next on KMYU. You are looking at Southern Utah's best defensive player, Cody Larson, who plays defensive tackle and is a four-year starter for the T-Birds. Meanwhile, his younger brother plays for Utah State, Tyler Larson. And is not just the Aggies' best offensive lineman, but one of the best in the West. We are inside Merlin Olsen Field at Romney Stadium in Logan, Utah. Our matchup is Southern Utah Thunderbirds versus the Utah State Aggies. Hello everyone, thank you for watching this Syscom Sports presentation of Utah State Football on KMYU. Michael Clanton along with Kevin White. Thrilled to kick off the 2012 season. Intriguing in-state matchup. Yeah, talking with the coaches, it's a little bit of a big brother versus little brother matchup here tonight. Not just the Larsons, but make no mistake, there's a plenty of talent out on the field here tonight. It should be a really interesting matchup in terms of how can Utah State continue on with the momentum they built last year with that five-game regular season winning streak. And for Southern Utah, how do they stack up against FBS competition? Should be a great backyard battle with bragging rights on the line, not only for the Larsons, but for both squads. Let's start with Southern Utah, the Thunderbirds. Back-to-back -back six and five seasons. This will be their first year in the Big Sky Conference, which is a major deal. And they've got an NFL prospect at quarterback, Brad Sorensen. Amazing. All 32 NFL teams have been to Cedar City this fall to see this young man compete. Last year, 3,143 yards, 17 touchdowns. He is an NFL mid-round selection in a lot of people's minds. The Utah State coaches, See, he reminds them a little bit of Ben Roethlisberger of the Pittsburgh Steelers with his escapability and his quick release. He will guide this Southern Utah team here tonight. And how about for Utah State? Best season they've had in over a decade. Winning season, a bowl appearance. The two returning quarterbacks are back, and that's good news for Matt Austin. Granted a 60 year of eligibility by the NCAA, and he is excited. 34 catches, six touchdowns a year ago, and that's good news for either of the Aggie quarterbacks. Coach Matt Wells, the new offensive coordinator, wants to throw down the field a little bit more this season and Austin will be the target of many of those targets up to 10 times here tonight. He'll be a good one to watch. When we come back, the starting lineups of the opening kickoff between the Thunderbirds from Southern Utah and the Aggies from Utah State. It's next on KMYU. Salt Lake Express and the airport shuttle have merged and become one. So we still have doorstep service and it's about the same price as it was before. Our focus now is to try to provide as many opportunities for people who, who need to have the ability to get to and from Salt Lake when they want. They don't want to wait at the airport for two hours. They also don't want to be driving around the valley when they get here. And you bring us to a location that leaves on time. We'll have another vehicle take you here to save time comfortably and that main vehicle goes 12 times a day on schedule both leaving the valley and coming back. This Syscom Sports presentation of Utah State Football is brought to you by Cash Valley Bank. We are Cash Valley's bank. Automatic car credit where your car buying experience is automatic. GNC, live well. Cash Valley Oxygen, serving Cash Valley for over 35 years. Salt Lake Express, from your door to the Salt Lake City Airport 12 times a day. 
and buy Four Seasons Event Center and Luxury Apartment Homes. Welcome back inside Rodney Stadium. Kickoff moments away between Southern Utah and Utah State. Tone up the 2012 college football season. A lot of fervor here in Logan, Cache Valley. A lot of people think this is one of the better Utah State teams in several years. Coming off of bowl appearance, won five consecutive regular season contests to end the season. A lot of enthusiasm here at Cache Valley. Let's meet the third member of our crew, Brooks Hansen. It's finally here. College football fans across America have been looking for this day for nine long months. And a lot of excitement here in the stadium down the field level. A lot of new things here at Utah State University. New field turf, new uniforms. Aggies are rocking those new Nike combat uniforms. Southern Utah's got a tough test tonight. We should have a good game, though. Good test. Brad Sorensen's looking to impress. Back to you guys. We'll be down here all night. Thank you, Brooks. Kevin, let's get to our automatic car credit keys of the game. Yeah, for Utah State, they want to play clean, meaning limit the, the number of penalties, no turnovers. They want to play clean on both sides of the football. And then on defense, they want to create takeaways. That'll be a key here all season long. Only four interceptions a year ago. They want to capitalize there. And for Southern Utah, they've got to limit the big play, especially in the Utah State running game. And then they, on the other side, want to establish the running game to take the pressure off of that Great West reigning player of the year, Brad Sorensen, the great quarterback for Southern Utah. The Utah State, as Brooks mentioned, new uniforms. Southern Utah, they had new uniforms last year. Back deep to return is C.J. Morgan, a transfer from Wyoming. Jacob Howder to kick things off. And this 2012 season is underway here in Logan, Utah. To about two yards deep in the end zone. Morgan coming out with it. Up to the 21. Now the new rule in college football, if you, he would have downed it, would have came out to the 25, but instead thought he could get something going. Instead gets to the 22. Well, that rule put into effect because of the concussion problems that uh, both in the NFL, all the way from even Little League, they want to make sure that they try to limit the number of concussions. That's really what that play is meant for. But it also gives the kick coverage team an opportunity to pin you back deep. So interesting, this new rule. Brad Sorensen, an All-American, a captain, Big Sky preseason offensive player of the year. Projected as a, a draft choice for Southern Utah. Leads him in essentially every career category thinkable. Going to start on the ground. This is something they really want to work at is this running attack. The last two years, Coach Land doesn't think they've had the personnel up front to be a run first team. This year they're going to try it. Brian Wilson gets the uh, first carry. The senior out of San Diego. So Dylan Fox, he was a fullback last year. Now he's their starting center. Brackus and far two very good guards. Fatu Walla, a transfer from Utah. Also Griff McNabb, another Utah transfer. Targets here for Brad Sorensen. It's our Cash Valley Bank starting lineup for Southern Utah's offense. Walla goes in motion. Sorensen, his first pass of the game, has time. And it's dropped. In and out of the uh, arms of the intended receiver there, incomplete. Good coverage by that Aggie defense. Something that uh, Coach Dave Aranda, the new defensive coordinator, is really going to emphasize is pressure up front and then stripping at the football. Cash Valley Bank starting lineups defensively. Seafelt is just a freshman, the nose guard. The linebackers, tall task replacing who they had here last year, Bobby Wagner. Tavares McMillan, watch for him. Also, Jake Dowdy's got that wild hair. McCade Brady, some NFL scouts here, intrigued with what Brady does. And we'll see Will Davis as well. On third down, Tiberts look to pass, incomplete. And a three and out for Southern Utah. Nice job by Utah State defensively. You know, we talked to Coach Dave Aranda earlier in the week, and uh, a new enthusiasm. He, he said this, this Aggie defense in the fall camp had 48 takeaways. A remarkable. And he said it reminded him a lot of his Hawaii team in 2010 that had so many takeaways. You can see the ball hawking right up front. Pressure up front off the edge this time. Connor Williams, and then good coverage in the secondary. Third meeting all time between Southern Utah and Utah State. Aggies have never lost to the T-Birds. They are 2-0. Of course, every game has been here in Logan. Look at this effort by Brock Miller inside the five-yard line. And that's where Coach Anderson's team will begin their first possession here in 2012, fourth year, 15-22. and 22. 
program certainly heading in the right direction now. This will be their final year in the WAC. Next year they'll be in the Mountain West Conference. And as Brooks mentioned, new field turf, new I mean, new uniform, new enthusiasm. It's amazing what a couple of years of, of building and building has done for this Utah State program. So the sophomore Chucky e. Keaton gets the start. Many people remember what he did last year as a true freshman walking into Auburn and playing so well. He will start for the second consecutive season for Coach Anderson and this offense. Might see Adam Kennedy later on. They might play both quarterbacks. They start on the ground. He's having to replace a couple of NFL guys as Turbin and Smith both drafted. So this will be Kerwin Williams' job, the senior, out of Las Vegas. Cash Valley Bank starting lineups. It's a new offensive line with the, uh, the Whippy Twins. We'll see both of them, but Kevin gets the start there at left tackle. Schultz a returner. Williams, Matt Austin, perhaps NFL potential. Chuck Jacobs also some NFL potential there. Again, they go to Williams, wrapped up by the T-Birds. Third down coming up here for the Aggies. So back-to-back -back runs by Kerman Williams. Yeah, playing it safe, backed up. You know, on the punt, Utah State had two returners back, Austin and Jacobs. But both of them sort of ran away from the football, so they're pinned back deep. Cash Valley Bank starting lineups. James Kowser getting the starts. Pretty good basketball player also with Davis. Zach Browning, the freshman, the guy in the middle. Tommy Collette, a returner from last year. Tyree Mills rocking the red fade. Keaton's first pass is caught. Has a first down, and he goes to his tight end, Kellen Bartlett, the senior out of Blue Springs, Missouri. We talked to offensive coordinator Matt Wells, and he said you'll see two and three and sometimes five tight ends in, in this Aggie offense. Trying to get the mismatches on the linebackers. They feel like that's a great advantage for them in the passing game. And Chucky Keaton, right on target to Bartlett with his first throw of 2012. Pick it on Tyree Mills over the middle. Williams off that right side. Good pickup on first down. Looked like that had the potential to maybe go all the way. Kerwin Williams so explosive. No doubt about it. Last year, 81 rushes, 542 yards, at almost a seven yard average. Three touchdowns. He does have breakaway speed. Out of the backfield, also seven receptions, 63 yards. A uh, couple of terrific contests last year at Auburn. And the ball game gets it again here. So the heavy dose of Kerwin Williams. Another Aggie first down up the middle. And now after three or four runs by Williams, here come the trips package. Several wide receivers in the game. And this may be where we see Matt Wells right off the bat in the opening possession, maybe taking one of those shots down the field, more so than what we saw last year out of the Aggie offense. It's a multiple-style offense. Spread, two backs, one back. As you mentioned, three, four tight ends. A lot of different looks from this offense. As you mentioned, trips near side. Keaton, plenty of time, and it's caught by Jacobs for a first down, but close to a first down, a yard and a half shy. Jacobs changed his number last year, 20 catches, 218 yards, and two touchdowns. He's a senior out of Richmond, California. This guy basically just showed up right before camp and is that vertical threat down the field. He's got blazing speed. And talking to a couple of the NFL scouts, they were curious to see how he would perform tonight, but he is on their radar. And they would like to see him in the return game as well. And there is Keaton, pardon me, Williams again. Steady dose of Kerwin Williams on this opening drive. Keaton, two for two. And again, remember, Keaton has that blazing speed and that multi-dimensional threat out of the quarterback position. Almost like an extra running back in there as well. So, I mean, it is awfully difficult when you spread them out like this to defend all across the field. Keaton and eight starts, ran for 293 yards and also four rushing touchdowns. So certainly a weapon, he keeps it here. Oh, it's popped by Zach Browning, also Flint Boy. So both linebackers able to get a shot on him. And he comes right out of the ball game. I don't know if he's got an equipment problem or... He's, yeah, the helmet came off. And that's another new rule is when the helmet comes off, you have to 
enter, you have to leave the ball game for at least a play. And if you recall last year, do you, the number of helmets <laughs> popping off a year An ago, epidemic. It was unbelievable. The last couple seasons, it just seems like chin straps not all the way fastened. So Kennedy gets it to Webb. Gets a block up to about the 46-yard line. Third and five coming up for Utah State. Adam Kennedy did a marvelous job coming in when Keaton got injured against Hawaii. Led them on that nice winning streak. Now he goes out as Chucky's helmet seems to be fashioned together okay, but well, he certainly did a super job. Speaking of Adam Kennedy in a backup role last year. No question. And into the bowl game. Even played well in the bowl game. And, uh, you know, tight battle all the way through fall camp. Utah Keaton. State very tight-lipped about who's going to start tonight. No question. We didn't know until Chucky came out. Keaton's pass is caught for a first down. Boy, On he... target so far is Chucky Keaton in this offense. Travis Reynolds, the junior, out of Florida with the reception. I think one of the things you're seeing already with Chucky Keaton, better mechanics and a lot more zip on the football. That one rifled right in there to Reynolds, picking up the first down and keeping the drive alive. He's also uh, bulked up a little bit more, hit the weight room. Of course, last year just a true freshman, kind of that slight build, a lot more muscle this season. Has time, deep over the middle, cut! Jacobs, touchdown Aggies! Just like that, as we said, Matt Wells wants to take a shot down the field, a two deep zone. Jacob splitting the defenders and right on the money from Chucky Keaton. 50 yards in the air, down the middle of the field, touchdown, Chuck Jacobs. Look at that, right splitting over the top of the, the linebackers, could not cover Jacobs down the field, in between the safeties with that spread formation. Jacobs out of the slot formation, right down the middle, touchdown Aggies. Great offensive start, a 90-plus yard drive to open the season. Rounding the freshman filling in for Chad Hansen, who sustained an injury in the uh, beginning of the spring ball. Got toasted on that one as Keaton to Jacobs. And the Aggies lead 7-0 over Southern Utah. 8.51 left, first quarter. In these economic times, your financial needs can be a game with serious opponents. So why not put your best player in the game? Cash Valley Bank has helped businesses and individuals achieve their own success. Whether your needs are commercial, agricultural, or personal, Cash Valley Bank is your best asset in attaining your goals. Win the game and achieve your success. We've always been on your team because we are Cash Valley's Bank. Sometimes life can be a little stressful. Take all the stress out of your life with the new Echernis Stressless Chair or Sofa from Edwards Furniture. These ergonomically designed chairs are specifically constructed to reduce stress while providing maximum comfort. Start taking the stress out of your life with an Echernis Chair or Sofa from Edwards Furniture. Nobody cares like Edwards Home Furnishings. USU running back Michael Smith thought his football career was over when he was injured. Injured so badly, I thought I won't be able to play again. Michael Smith had what we call a sesamoiditis, as well as turf toe. There was a lot of dedication and hard work on Michael's end. His hard work paid off, and Michael had a stunning senior year and was drafted into the NFL. People are willing to work with you and make you a better athlete, make you a better person. Congratulations, Michael. Well, great way to start on offense for Utah State, making it look easy. Yeah, nice job of mixing the run and pass. Keaton three for three, Kennedy one for one. When Keaton had to step out with the uh, the helmet popping off. And uh, Kerwin Williams, some good runs mixed in. So a nice job of play calling. Matt Wells, his first time as an offensive coordinator. Excellent play calling on that opening series. And it was a pretty good offense last year. Total offense, they were program best. 5,945 yards. Rushing yards, 3,675 points, 437, and touchdown 60. All best in program history. So a lot left here for Coach Wells to work with, and he kind of proved it on the opening drive. But as a uh, 
a new coordinator, that's got to make you feel great. No question. The touchdown. No question about it. And then he lived up to what he told us earlier in the week, that he wanted to throw it down the field a little bit more. Now, we haven't targeted Matt Austin yet, so it'll be interesting to see how that works. Salt Lake Express scoring drive. 11 paint plays, 97 yards, nearly five minutes of clock. And it was Keaton to Jacobs. Second possession here for Southern Utah. Hannah Brown, who played well down the stretch last year, filling in for Austin Benefee and Decker Alexander. They expect big things from Hannah Brown. He's a local product at a Cypress High School, Magda, Utah. He played in nine games, but had two starts. Last year, 27 carries, 118 yards, and three touchdowns. Really played well against UC Davis. And that's, I think, what kind of convinced the coaching staff that, hey, this is our guy, and I think we'll be okay at running back for next season. Movement on the right tackle. The two tackles, kind of a storyline here, because they're new for Southern Utah. That was Peterson, Russell Peterson, 6'4", 319, junior out of Manti, and the other tackle is uh, Cody Burgess, 6'6", 319, a junior from Panaka, Nevada. Coach Ed Lamb has done a marvelous job. Marvelous. He inherited a team that went 0-19, and in 2010, they won the conference championship in the Great West, the first conference championship in 17 years for Southern Utah. This program going the right direction, and Sorensen's pass a little bit high, incomplete. Third down coming up. up. Followed that up a year ago with another 6-5 and five winning mm -hmm. record. So a lot of great expectations for the Southern Utah program, especially as they're moving into the Big Sky Conference. Sorensen, make no mistake, he's the guy that runs the boat. Th does he look nervous to you a little bit? He, he got a little bit under that throw and threw it high. Now, Steve Clark, the offensive coordinator, told us before the game that he wants to keep him healthy especially against Utah State this week and Cal next week leading into the Big Sky Conference. So he's going to get the ball out early, and that may lead to some overthrows and some, uh, you know, he just doesn't want to turn the ball over, and he want to, wants to keep him upright and healthy. Pressure coming. Fatu Moala making the adjustment, but can't make the catch on a third and ten. And so Southern Utah, for the second time, they go three and out, and will have to punt the football away. Really interested to see this Aggie secondary this season. This time, Nevin Lawson step for step for, with Moala right there with him. Just a little simple fade route down the sideline, timing route. Lawson right there. I'm curious to watch this secondary because uh, Dave Aranda told us this is a group that's going to make some plays this fall. Brock Miller's last punt was 72 yards. This one will be fielded at the 25. And this is Jacobs. Look at him go up the middle to the 44. A nice return by Utah State. They'll have another great drive start as their last one. They were pinned inside the five. This time going to start in Tiber territory. What a return by Jacobs. We, you mentioned it. NFL scouts love this young man in the kicking game. You can see why. He cut the ball in his hands, didn't let it get into his body, and then right up the field, set up his blocks well, and burst of speed. Of course, he's the, the touchdown maker in the opening possession for the Aggies, so an excellent start to the 2012 season for that young man, Chuck Jacobs. Keaton back in. Flawless drive. They went something like 97 yards. Williams bottled up inside. Nowhere for him to go. Kowser, Larson, Meyer, and Jeff took off. who playing that full end, all combining on the stop of Williams. Browning also, that freshman that you mentioned, filling in for Hanson. Coming up to fill in and make the tackle as well. Amari Holding Flint to no gain. seen a couple of different looks out of the Aggie running game. The sweep fly, or the fly sweep, I should say, the, the, the read off of the, the uh, spread. Again, wide open. I believe this is Bruce Natson, 18, 5'7", 145 freshman out of Oakland Park, Florida. Changed his number right before I believe this week, I think, is when he changed his number, but they love him. He makes a ton of plays, made a ton of plays in camp. Just a freshman, very slight build, but brings a lot of energy. No question about it, and that's four different receivers now that Keaton has targeted in the first two possessions, and that's not 
even hitting his main target yet. Matt Austin on the outside, on the up, uh, upper side of the screen here in this formation. Keaton looking to him. He's going to fire to Austin, and it's caught for a touchdown. Right on cue, Keaton to Austin. Wow. What a throw. Chucky Keaton showing me something here. They really didn't unleash him a year ago. Everything underneath, everything short. But Matt Wells told us on Wednesday, or on uh, Tuesday, I guess it was, that uh, we're going to take shots down the field, especially this young man. He's going to get 10 targets each game. And a lot of those are going to be down the field. Uses his hands beautifully to call that pass in. And Keaton, wow, what a start. Right on the button for Utah State. Looks sharp. Matt Austin beating Miles Killebro, another freshman from Southern Utah. And the extra point is good. So two drives for Utah State, two touchdowns. They lead the T-Birds by a score of 14 to nothing. 6.15 left, first quarter. Steve, you'll obviously remember me as a three-time all-conference water polo player at Utah State University. Okay, so you probably don't know me, but here are some people you need to know. We have the best prices on used vehicles, guaranteed credit approval, and the financing expertise to get you the deal you deserve. With locations in Ogden and Logan, Automatic Car Credit has you covered regardless of which value you live in. So Aggie fans, while you may not know me, you need to know these guys. With all kinds of amazing entrees and salads, world famous desserts, and free popcorn for everybody, no wonder we say, hunger's for the birds. That's the way you wing it. And don't forget, Winger's Family Buckets to go. We might not be the biggest player on the field, but our winning team at Lewiston State Bank has what it takes to help you score financially. We've been perfecting our game plan and executing perfect plays since 1905. Making Lewiston State Bank not only quicker and more efficient than the other guys, but we do it all with a much more personal touch. And without any government help. Let us be part of your financial game plan. The Ford Labor Day sales event is on now. It's the best time to save on the 23 MPG F-150 with best-in-class towing, payload, and mileage. And get 0 for 60 plus 1,000 or up to 7,500 total savings. Don't miss the Labor Day sales event at your local Ford store. Well, the herd has showed up. A nice crowd on hand. The 2012 kickoff, as we've kind of mentioned. A lot of excitement surrounding Cash Valley and Utah State. All the improvements that they've made, both physically with the new turf and the uniforms, going to the conference, but also they're picked second in the WAC in their final season in the Western Athletic Conference. Right behind La Tech. Out of bounds, so this will be a good drive start here for Southern Utah. They need it after a couple of back to back three and outs. Salt Lake Express scoring drive, this time just three plays, 45 yards. Keaton to the 35-yard pass to Matt Austin. So they've had a long field able to score, a short field, no problem. But they were set up nicely by that Chuck Jacobs punt return. Absolutely, excellent job in the kicking game. And a terrific play, the first target of the season to that young man, Matt Austin. Great speed, granted his sixth year of eligibility by the NCAA. Really excited to be back for one more year. And he is, more than anybody, maybe excited for Matt Wells' new offense because he wants to get down the field and get chances to the end zone like that one right there. Many people think the offense last year a little too conservative. Here's Hannah yeah, Brown, his second rush of attempt. Take up about three yards on first down. This is something that Southern Utah really wants to work on is that running game. They, they want that to be their identity. They've been pass happy the last couple years, and why not when you got the caliber of uh, Brad Sorensen, but they feel like to be successful in the Big Sky Conference, going to have to be more balanced this year. They feel like they got the horses up front to kind of push some people around. They just haven't had that in years past. Total yards right now being dominated by Utah State. I have formation again. This is Brown. Picks up a couple, just shy of the 40-yard line. Third down coming up. Been tough in the opening two possessions for Southern Utah. Been in third and long each possession. There's uh, Seafelt, the big freshman, starting nose guard, 6'2, 299 out of Sun City, Arizona. Should see a lot of 
defensive lineman for Utah State as this game progresses. Staples yet to convert on a third down. Yeah, one of the staples of Gary uh, uh, Gary Anderson defense is a lot of rotation up front. Sorensen's pass incomplete, looking to go to Pedersen, well covered by Utah State. Will Davis, young man from Spokane, tremendous stride since last season. Again, NFL scouts kind of here for him as well. Almost picks that one off. He wasn't real impressed with Sorensen. He says, I, I go up against a guy like that every day in practice and Adam Kennedy. Uh, he's lucky he didn't get a penalty there kicking the football after the play, but he's really one of the ball-hawking playmakers on this Utah State defense. Came up with eight or nine interceptions in the fall camp. Miller, that was dangerously close to being a block. Jacob says, get away from it, and this is another fantastic effort by Miller. Another one inside the five. Kelly Marker came out late. I'm not sure what the call's going to be, but uh, again, Utah State backed up inside the five. The first time, they went 97 yards for a touchdown. So thank you to our referee, Robert Cameron. Aggies on top, 14 to nothing. They get the ball back again. Will they score again? Back to Logan, Utah after this. Life can be a little stressful. Take all the stress out of your life with the new Ekronis Stressless Chair or Sofa from Edwards Furniture. These ergonomically designed chairs are specifically constructed to reduce stress while providing maximum comfort. Start taking the stress out of your life with an Ekronis Chair or Sofa from Edwards Furniture. scored on their previous two possessions. See what they can do. Possession number three, Chucky Keaton. Fantastic. Six for six, 117 yards and two touchdowns. This is Williams just caught in the backfield again. Nice job by that T-Bird defense. That's Ricky Clark, 6'2", 225-pound senior out of Hayward, California. Got him around the ankles. Last time the Aggies backed up at this position. Went 97 yards for an opening touchdown to start this season. Wouldn't that be something? Two drives of 95 plus to start a season? So the Utah has other ideas here. Sanderson, who went in motion, popped right at the goal line, nowhere to go. Nice job by James Kowser, the freshman at a Davis High School back from his mission. He's done a real nice job in camp. Makes a stick that time. So third down coming up for Utah State. Exactly what Southern Utah needs right here to get a stop and get field position. Excellent read by Kowser, knifing through. Excellent form of the tackle as well to get Williams to the turf. Kowser 6'4", 244. And a Fruit Heights, Utah. Going to keep it on the ground. And first down and much more past the 20. Williams, he is a weapon out there. Wow, sort of a conservative call, but Williams makes it work. He did an excellent job of following his blockers through the hole and then made a play by making someone miss and breaking it to the outside for the first down. It's a big play for the Aggie offense getting out of trouble. 
It was a third and 11. They decided to keep it on the ground. Good second effort that time by Williams. Utah State, another third down conversion, another first down. And now out of the pistol formation. So various positions of formations for this Aggie offense. Kazra unable to make the tackle. Ball came out late. Liv Kerwin was down, but he gets the ball back, so no harm anyhow. And, and now look Utah at State really working on that running game. And look at the tempo right back at the line of scrimmage. They want to attack. When they get big chunks of yardage, they want to get right back up at the line of scrimmage and not let that defense get set. Oh, big stick again coming up. This is uh, Corey Jones, 6'4", 294 sophomore out of Texas. Oof. Or pardon me, that was uh, Brad Meyer, the junior from Boise. At a Capital High School, they have high hopes for him. Played in nine games last season. <laughs> a pancake of a tackle that time on Williams. And now Joe Hill looks like he gets his first action in the Aggie backfield. Third and two for Utah State. Able to ran for it last time. Here's Keaton steps up as the first down. And slides down. Wise move by Chucky Keaton. Accomplished what he needed to do and then got down. What a weapon. Moves, speed, vision, and an improved arm. Look at the vision, down the field, down the field, waited, saw the lane open, and then watched the move right there. Broken ankle, and then he actually slid where he may have been able to continue down the field, but, you know, live to play another day. I think that's a wise decision. Big ball, Austin with the catch. Working on Namari Flintroy, the linebacker. Boy, he had one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Keaton recognized it. Austin, big body receiver, excellent hands. We saw the touchdown catch in his hands, and this one up at its highest point, too. Getting it in the hands, good for the first down completion. And Keaton still perfect in the throwing game here in the first quarter. It's actually against Mills, the sophomore, number six. Marching down the field again. <laughs> So Hill, Hill, the sophomore out of Fullerton, California last year, seven carries, 24 yards, and a touchdown. Played in seven games. Now here in the opener, and quickly, here comes Utah State. Hilly Barker's down, but it's a touchdown for Utah State. Joe Hill on back-to-back -back carries. Right back to the attack after the big chunk of yardage, and I don't think Southern Utah Got a player off the field. I mean, there's 12 men on the field against Southern Utah. That quick up-tempo offense striking. Utah State will decline this. It's exactly what it is. 12 men on the field. Touchdown, Joe Hill. And a 98-yard drive here for Utah State. Unbelievable start to the 2012 season for this Utah State offense under new offensive coordinator, Matt Wells. Everything working right now for that Utah State offense and on defense, three, three and outs. Go back to that third and 11, backed up deep in their own end. And Williams, for that second effort, extends the drive. And Hill finishes the thing on a 27-yard touchdown score. Utah State has now rushed for 102 yards. And we're still in the first quarter with about a minute left. Keaton recognized that Southern Utah had 12 players on the field, got the snap knowing he was going to get the first down on penalty. But because of the up-tempo practice that the Utah State Aggies offense has implemented this fall, they were set and ready. Open seam for Joe Hill. So great news for the Aggies, identifying a couple of new running backs as well after losing Robert Turbin to the Seattle Seahawks, Michael Smith to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Williams, and now Joe Hill Two good-looking young running backs here for Utah State. Well, we've seen Kerwin Williams for some time. He's a senior. But Joe Hill making a stamp on his impression early here in 2012. So it's all rolling. It's all good here for Utah State. Still 101 left in this opening quarter. Southern Utah a little bit shell-shocked right now on both sides of the football. Now wondering, can we compete here against this upgraded program in Cache Valley? from Utah State University. Brock Warren, the walk-on out of Skyview, kicking it off. It's been out of the first couple of times. 
Tiber's going to return it. Going to come out to the 25. Up ended to about the 24. And so Morgan again. I, Wyoming transfer. Want to get him the ball in any way possible. Thinks he can make something happen. Morgan, yeah, that is a game saving return. tackle there. Salt Lake Express scoring drive, nine plays, 98 yards, 344. And it was Hill from 27 yards out. So Utah State, three drives, two of those inside their own five yard line. Wow, just amazing execution offensively. Only one penalty. We talked about playing clean on both sides of the football. The only penalty, the kick out of bounds, which got Warren his opportunity to kick off here, who ended up making the tackle, really the touchdown saving tackle there on the kickoff return. Sorensen so far 0 for 5, yet to complete a ball. They stay on the ground. This is Wilson. There is just no room there. Utah State able to plug it. Patelli, did I say it right? Practiced it for five minutes before the game. <laughs> it was Lasique with the uh, total yards, you see. Boy, Southern Utah only mustering two yards on that last possession. 240 to 12. Total domination here in the first quarter for Utah State on both sides of the football. Big thing is they just need to get a first down right now. They've been competitive. Speaking of Southern Utah, against FBS programs, everybody remembers the one last year when they beat UNLV handily. But they had three pick sixes. The offense didn't play all that great, and Sorensen had just kind of a so-so game. But it was that defense with those three touchdowns. So we'll see. They've got some work to do against Utah State. That is the end of one. And the Aggies dominating so far here at home, leading Southern Utah 21-0. Back with a second quarter after this. Utah State looking for their sixth consecutive regular season win. Ended last year in fine fashion with five consecutive railed off. Really off to a good start here in this now second quarter. Yeah, really behind Adam Kennedy. But how about Chucky Keaton? Injured last year in that Hawaii game. Kennedy came in and sparked Utah State to five consecutive regular season wins and, and into the bowl game. But Chucky Keaton looks special here tonight. Sorensen. From the gun, so he can get on track. He's going to run for a first down. This is the first first down by Southern Utah, and he slides out of bounds. So good to see SUU finally get a first down, able to move the sticks a little bit. It's been three three and outs. Sorensen still yet to complete a ball. This time getting the first one with his own legs. Maybe that'll spark this Southern Utah offense to get something moving. They need something good to happen on this drive right now. That's kind of the criticism is his mobility. They think he's not mobile enough, but shows you he does have some mobility, able to scramble for a first down. Although the Utah State coaches think his mobility inside the pocket is very good, very much like Ben Roethlisberger of the Pittsburgh Steelers. False start against Southern Utah. Moving back five yards after that scramble by Sorensen. Well, just when you get something good happening, you put yourself in a tough position. Little penalties, they hurt. Especially when you're struggling to get chunks of yardage and first downs. Hard to start at first and 15. Love to see Sorensen get a little more comfortable in the pocket. Maybe a quick out thrower or a little dump check down to a back. It has first completion for the season. I mean, he came in completing almost 67% of his passes over the last two years. The shotgun looking to step up again, brought down at the 40. So Larson comes in with the stop. But on the other hand, you've got to give Utah State's defense credit. Again, nobody open. Had some time that time to throw it. Nobody available. Had to step up in the pocket and try to get some valuable yardage. B.J. Larson right there on the stop for the Aggie defense. Maybe the fifth or sixth or even eighth defensive line we've seen here in the first half for Utah State. Larson, 6'5", 268, a junior from right here in Logan. Sorensen. 
And it's caught by the transfer from Utah, Griff McNabb, 5'7", 165 junior. Many people remember in that bowl game, he had the big punt return to set up Utah for the win against Georgia Tech. He wanted to play more receiver, wasn't going to get that chance at Utah, so now he's a T-Bird. Good pocket protection, working on Willie Davis. McNabb, a simple corner out, and a good throw by Sorensen right on the money. As we mentioned, 32 NFL teams, all 32 NFL teams. And two general managers going to Cedar City, specifically for Brad Sorensen. The Ravens there twice. They think he's a mid-round NFL draft caliber quarterback. Ooh, Brown <laughs> took a shot at the 40. Yeah, the Lawson that got him. Lawson not real big. 5'10", 183 pound junior out of Florida, but not afraid to stick his nose in there. Watch this, pop, and down goes Hannah Brown, who's much bigger. Lawson stepping over the top, don't like to see that. Stepping over the top, show, sort of showing up your opponent, but excellent form tackle. Head up, shoulder, leading with the shoulder. Excellent technique, and we've seen Lawson in both the Pass coverage now and in the run game, showing he's stepped up his game here. Second and eight, Sorensen does have time. Now running out of it, he's gonna be dropped at about the 41. I think for the most part, the outside tackles have done a decent job. He's had somewhat of a pocket, but I think those cover guys are covering the receivers. And this and that's what's he, leading to these stops. He wanted to check it down to Hannah Brown over the middle. Brown slipped forcing Sorensen to tuck it and move up into the pocket. But Williams. you're right. He's had a, a, enough time to throw. Tackle's doing a, a decent job. And we haven't called Tyler Fackle's name yet. Utah State's defense thinks that he might be really special as a freshman getting, getting pressure on a quarterback. It's caught, but shy of a first down by Fatu Nuala. But there again, Terrence Alston this time for that Utah State defense. Right on the button in his coverage on Moala, stopping him short, for the, short of the first down. And now, if you're Southern Utah, you're inside the Utah State 40. Yeah, Sorensen's still out there. They're I think go you got to go for it. I mean, you, you really have nothing to lose if you're Southern Utah. Try to gain some momentum. I mean, Utah State has shown they've already can drive it 90 plus yards twice. So you might as well try to keep a drive alive here and keep some momentum going. Can they protect Sorensen long enough? Fourth and five, he's got time, goes the big ball, and it's dropped, but there's a penalty marker down at about the six yard line. And that's a good looking ball by Sorensen. Beautiful throw, working over there on Jumani Robinson, er, excuse me, Robertson, Utah State corner. You know, it's interesting, we talked to Matt Wells and he said they wanted to take the shots down the field because two of three good things could happen. Robertson, flag for the penalty, but you're right, an excellent throw on the outside shoulder where only McNabb could get it. I'm sorry, that was Jeremy Morgan, or Cameron Morgan, I should say, the receiver for Southern Utah. A little hand fighting. But two, two or three things can happen, and those two things are good. Either pass interference or a catch. The only bad thing is an incomplete pass, and you get to play another down. In this case, it was a fourth down, so it could have been a bad thing, but when you take shots down the field, good things happen. Morgan last year making the switch from cornerback to receiver. Only two receptions for 15 yards all of last season. He's going to be one of the main guys here for SMU. Wilson backing his way to about the 18-yard line. Ryan Wilson, he got the start several years ago against Wyoming. You thought he might be more of a staple of this offense. Really hasn't been the case, kind of pushed out by Menifee and Decker Alexander. But now getting a chance here in the senior year, he's going to platoon it with Hannah Brown. We might even see Malik Brown, who they're high on, the freshman out of Las Vegas. There is Henna. Sorensen to the line. This is by far the best drive for Southern Utah. This was the first drive that they picked up a first down. Offset eye, quick pass. And covered nicely by Will Davis. Maybe a gain of one. 
Davis, the senior out of Spokane, Washington. JC guy, Coach Aranda said, he's by far our best athlete on defense. That's high praise. Call him a freak. I think he said that because he, he wears good different time. socks, he wears a different sort of hairstyle, but he also makes plays. He's, what he think, I think he meant was he's freakishly athletic as well. This time on Jessup. Yeah, he's got a fun personality, had a chance to talk to him. He was on his way to Hawaii. He's going to be a warrior, but then Coach Anderson talked to him and says, we're going to go over to Hawaii and beat these guys, be a part of Utah State, and he certainly has. And a Brown in the flats, inside the five, has a Southern Utah first down. Brown last year, eight catches, 48 yards. So and this is in limited playing time, so I think this is what we're going to see from Southern Utah as they go down the road, Brown out of the backfield. This time he beat Kyler Fackrell, the freshman, and that's one of those NFL-style throws. That out from the far hash, the arm strength to get it out there, where only his receiver could get to it, that was a terrific throw by Sorensen. Now maybe starting to settle in just a little bit. There's Brown nowhere to go. Williams and company in to make the stop. Also, Tavares McMillan, the sophomore from Miami. They really like McMillan. Filling in for Bobby Wagner. Second round draft choice for the Seattle Seahawks. Four year starter at linebacker for Utah State. But they think that McMillan can be equally as solid as that whack defensive player of the year, Bobby Wagner. Seven and a half tackle for losses last year. Second and goal for Southern Utah. You can roll Sorensen out. Pressure coming, steps up and just throws it away. He had Morgan in the back of the end zone. Wonder if he would have waited a split second, he would have saw that he was being uncovered there in the back, but just lives to play another down, sets up a third and goal now for SUU. And we know the offensive coordinator, Steve Clark and Ed Lamb, don't want Sorensen taking hits. And they've coached him to say, hey, get the ball out, throw it away. We won't, don't want you taking big hits. He wanted to go to McNabb in the flat and had it. Brian Sweet fell down. And McNabb came open, but he had come off at that point. Back to Morgan. Third and goal, Sorensen. Running out of time, just gonna heave this one and throw it away. So back-to-back -back throwaways, and now the field goal unit comes on for Southern Utah. Colton Cook, the junior out of uh, Bountiful, went to Viewmont High School last year, was 14 of 19 in the field goal department. So Coach Land, Coach Clark saying good drive, but really it was the USU cheerleader out here that had the best shot at this one, right? There, if she got her head around, she could have made the catch. <laughs> But a little Utah bit late. <laughs> trying to get some points on the board. Startled her. And the field goal is good, so the team is able to get on the board. And they show that they want to be competitive against Utah State, and they finally were on that drive. But so far, Aggies have dominated up 21 to 3, 7.49 left. In these economic times, your financial needs can be a game with serious opponents. So why not put your best player in the game? Cash Valley Bank has helped businesses and individuals achieve their own success. Whether your needs are commercial, agricultural, or personal, Cash Valley Bank is your best asset in attaining your goals. Win the game and achieve your success. We've always been on your team because we are Cash Valley's bank. Sometimes life can be a little stressful. Take all the stress out of your life with the new Echernes Stressless Chair or Sofa from Edwards Furniture. These ergonomically designed chairs are specifically constructed to reduce stress while providing maximum comfort. Start taking the stress out of your life with an Echernes Chair or Sofa from Edwards Furniture. Nobody cares like Edwards Home Furnishings. UHU wide receiver Stanley Morrison saw his world change when he shattered his foot. Jumping off the down board, shattered my foot. The road to recovery was pretty long and hard. It took eight months. Our focus was going to be trying to get more mobility and range in his ankle. What helped me get back to the way I played football was the physical therapist that helped me. After rehab, my 2011 season was a success for me. 
because I was able to perform like I needed to and go out and play to the best of my ability. Southern Utah settling for a field goal. Utah State leading the T-Birds 21 to three. Mentioned this is the third meeting all time. Utah State won both meetings. Typically they're competitive in that first half and then the Aggies just take it away in the second half. But uh, so far it has been all Utah State. Jacobs back to return deep for USU. Will he bring it out? He will, three yards deep. And the ball is out. <laughs> Haven't seen the officials say who's got it. Looks like Utah State able to pop onto the football. So they will retain possession here. That could have been somewhat of a momentum change. Tagliaferri, Mike Tagliaferri, the backup fullback, tackling the football. And that's what Southern Utah needs here. They need a turnover. They need a, a spark to capitalize on that good offensive drive that they had. Sorensen was four of six on that drive. So maybe settling in just a little bit. The big penalty on the fourth down, giving them the ball, uh, the, the first down, and then they got inside the, the Aggie Reds, or the uh, inside the 10, stalled a little bit, but a good opening drive, or uh, opening drive here in the second quarter for Southern Utah. Yeah, Tagli the ferry. Forcing that fumble on special teams. Here's Williams bouncing it to the outside. Still going past the 30. You know, Michael, one of the things I really liked about Robert Turbin was his ability to be patient after taking the handoff and waiting for the blocks to develop. We've seen that here in the first half from Kerwin Williams as well. Sort of lead draw, waited for his blocks to develop, and then bounced out and found the opening. 11 carries, pardon me, 12 carries for 58 yards for Kerwin. It's going to be a tackle for loss, I believe, by that Southern Utah defense. They made plays here and there, but certainly not with that consistency. As Utah State scored every time they've touched the ball. Perfection by Keaton. 7 for 7, 138, and two touchdowns. Led him on three scoring drives. He had the one third down conversion as well with his feet. Kept the drive alive. And now with third and one, you really have the opportunity to do whatever you'd like here on offense. He's ran it two times for 18 yards. Williams picks up the first down up to about the 34 yard line. So good job by that offensive line. Giving Keaton plenty of time to throw, opening up big gaping holes for that young man, Kerwin Williams, and even Joe Hill with the 27 yard touchdown run in the first quarter. It's Utah State's first possession here in the second quarter, so a good long drive to start the quarter by Southern Utah. Can Utah State answer? Keaton, a big pass out to Webb, his second catch. He's a great story. You know him because of what he did at Snow College. Walked onto the program and finally was awarded a scholarship just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, great story. Kept working, kept working. Got himself into the mix, really the fourth or third receiver in this Aggie rotation, making Cache Valley proud. Bunch of Cache Valley kids on this Utah State squad. As a matter of fact, 55 kids on this Utah State team from the state of Utah. Pressure coming, and the ball is incomplete, and it will be a grounding call. No fumble, clearly it was a forward pass, but uh, there was nobody in the vicinity in terms of Utah State. They were trying to set up the screen to Kerwin Williams. Keaton waited a little bit too long. And then he had two Southern Utah defenders. Watch him here. Losing ground, losing ground. Eyes down the center of the field, then back out. Saw that Williams was sort of covered up. Had to clutch it again. And then just kind of bumped it out there. Was not outside of the tackle box. So that is a good call, a grounded call against Utah State. Austin Anderson, the uh, sophomore from Las Vegas giving pressure on Keaton. I think that may have been Cody Larson in there late as well, right there, big number 58. The Larson boys going up against each other. Cody, uh, preseason all whack. First team selection, his brother, the first team. I, I, I meant to say Big Sky for Cody Larson. Tyler, sure. first team all whack. They're going up head to head here this afternoon. Keaton pump fakes and the T-Birds record a sack back 
at about the 21-yard line. There he is. Older brother, big brother, Cody Larson. He's bulked up. He's about 270 a year ago this year, up to almost 300. And when the scouts came to Cedar City to watch Brad Sorensen, they got a chance to see this young man as well, who many scouts think have a future at the next level. He told me, riding on the bus yesterday, had a chance to visit with him and told me that uh, he would love to play at the next level and hopes to